Welcome to the OTA podcast where we discuss everything performance training. I'm Coach Chris Barnard. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to the OTA podcast. I'm your host, Coach Chris Barnard. And for today's video, what I want to discuss is what I feel like is the missing piece or holy grail to performance development of athletes. And what I mean by that is obviously when it comes to developing an athlete, there's many different modalities, whether that be your strength training, your plyometrics, your speed, agility, mobility, correctives, all these different things I feel like for the most part, uh, coaches and athletes are good at checking those boxes. But if there was one that I feel will get you a, a huge return uh, of investment on your work is going to be developing the lower limb, especially the foot and ankle complex. Essentially, what I mean when I'm referring to that is that, you know, coaches and athletes just seem to lack not only programming specifically for that, but also the understanding of how much it takes to actually get true development in the lower limb. What I mean by that is there's specific progressions that I've saw and specific amount of volume or a a range of volume for us to also get adaptation. Think about it like this. We walk on our foot, you know, how many steps do you get in a day? Uh, When you resist and you load, how many times are you doing these things where you're, you're, you're still working it? So I guess what I'm getting at is you have to actually exceed from a volume standpoint what you're already doing. You have to increase the intensity and the load through that foot and ankle for us to actually see true adaptation. So I'm going to give you a couple keys that I've discovered from the past Uh, years of training and developing of what it takes to actually get true adaptation and how it will essentially translate over. So from a translation standpoint, obviously with the athlete making contact with the ground, if we keep the elastic qualities and really elevate them, you know, through the ball of the foot, when they strike the ground, inversion, eversion, if they're moving laterally, if we can really elevate those things, they're essentially for lack of a better words, not leaking power when they go to cut or spring off the ground or jump or divert force, whatever it is, everything starts from the ground up and starts through that foot. So if that foot is strong enough, if the tendons are strong enough, stiff enough, they're not only going to be able to endure the force that the knee and hip joints are producing, but they're also able to Uh, essentially accentuated. This is why you see uh, some of the jumpers, let's say for instance in the NBA, when you see them jump, they're not going to spool up and and bend at the hip and take this real deep squat to get up. They're actually springing off of their foot. They actually don't get too much of a hip bend. Okay. So it just goes to show you that as you continue to develop over time, the lower limb, you are essentially being able to basically minimize ground contact and it's gonna overall make you a better athlete. What's up coaches, real quickly, let me go ahead and introduce you to Performance Coach U certification. Now this is the certification slash course that I put together for coaches who want to train athletes and not only get results, but also maximize profits in the private sector. The problem that I saw with a lot of these courses and certifications out there for coaches was that they provided a lot of information and not a lot of application. So I wanted to pull back the covers over 10 plus years of experience and show you the ins and outs of actually being in the trenches so that you get maximum results while also scaling your business. So if you're interested in this, go ahead and check out the link down below and you can get more information. All right, so let's get into how we're actually gonna develop this. First and foremost, what I'm referring to when developing the lower limb is I'm referring to really building up that tendon stiffness and those elastic strength qualities in the foot and ankle. So what I'm gonna do is Every single session that we perform with us here, with our guys, we're going to perform some series of prep work where we're performing POGO, low-level plyometrics, where we really isolate the foot and ankle and really make that work with small hops or bounds, okay? Um, So that's what I'm referring to when I'm saying developing the lower limb. You actually need to hammer those POGO jumps every session, over the course of an entire three to four months for you to see true adaptation. Remember, 
tendon stiffness to really actually develop that and get an adaptation in that is it it takes time you're not going to see that like a strength training with your athletes like you see uh you know huge jumps in their strength over the course of week one two three four right it actually takes three to four months of you steadily increasing the volume for you to be able to see that adaptation so first and foremost make sure every single session that you are performing some series of low level pogo jumps where you're isolating the foot next tip that i'm going to give you is make sure that whatever you're jumps they match what the what you're actually training for that day for instance if i'm training linear speed all of our athletes are going to perform linear focused pogos and a series of progressions that focus on linear pogos if i'm performing agility or change of direction the athletes are going to perform pogos in a lateral fashion or a multitude of change of direction. They might divert forces and do some simple line hops. They might progress to moving in 90 degrees or diagonal manners. Things that are, again, are going to address what they're gonna be doing in that actual training session. And then finally, the other thing that you're gonna wanna make sure is that you balance it out. If you just attack pogos, and I ran into this a couple years ago, and you just load up volume in the general prep phase, and you don't balance out flexion extension, what you're gonna notice is the athletes are gonna probably get shin splints, okay? Or they're gonna get some kind of pain to that anterior tibialis. So every time I have them do a series of pogos, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have them balance it out by doing a simple heel walk back, right? And by walking on the heel, we're actually balancing out between that extension and flexion of the foot and ankle. So now that that's addressed, and essentially we, we addressed that you need to perform volume and accumulate volume, so it should be in an ascending order, so you should stack up as you go. Then the next thing is you want to make sure that you intensify and progress those movements as you go along. What does that look like? So in phase one, I might do everything bilateral, meaning it's going to be off both feet. As I continue to progress, and depending on the level of athlete, I might have them move to a single leg or an alternating where then we can continue to apply more stress across the foot and ankle and then ultimately move to that single leg where it's going to be the most amount of stress. And again, I only do it and, you know, we might start off with five yards and essentially get to 10, even up to 20 yards of performing this so I can really fatigue and work through. The big key here is I want to really eliminate the knee and the hip when I'm doing these jumps so that I can really focus on that athlete being able to get that stimulus across the ball of the foot. Now, other ways that I intensify is, you know, not only through the movements, right, as we progress along, but the other thing is, is that there is a specific thing that we usually do that match the plyometric modality that we're training. So for instance, general prep, like I said, we load up on volume then usually we have a level of isometric, right? So on the isometric phase, what we actually do is in our resistance training, when they're performing some kind of single leg movements, they're actually gonna be on the ball of the foot or placing the force through there. So there's actually, they're not planted on their heels, right? They're actually driving through the ball of the foot. And we also might do some other series of movements where they're holding a load with resistance, where again, I'm training through that foot and ankle complex in an isometric fashion. Then from there, when we go to eccentrics, most of our modalities on the plyometric side are all going to be about deceleration or that eccentric portion, um, force absorption, if you will. So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to overload with some resistance. So now I'm going to do a lot of the same pogos that we've been doing, but now I'm going to add a, a light dumbbell um, or, or some kind of resistance, external resistance that's going to make it tougher to absorb that force. Now, again, I can progress from the simple, most simple bilateral to alternating to single leg. Finally, after we get that done, now we're going to focus on concentric. And concentric is all about developing rate of force development. So how do we do that with the lower limb? Well, we want to focus more on the side of the velocity between the force velocity curve. So we actually want to go band assisted. So now when we're going band assisted, we're focused on contractile velocity and being able to move across that foot and ankle with speed. 
Now we're really focused on ground contact, really building those elastic qualities. And then finally, usually around peak phases when we put everything together. And this is where I really want to get my taps in or my touches in when it comes to lower hurdles or, you know, mixing the range of hurdles and really getting the athlete to focus on ground contact. So being able to touch and go rapidly and really focused on being able to work through the foot and ankle. Um, and again, this is addressed every single day that we come in. This is usually taking place in prepping them before their actual, you know, deep speed work or plyometrics or whatever it might be. Um, if I'm training vertical, they're going to be stationary. If I'm training speed, it's going to be linear. If I'm training change of direction, it'll be lateral or change of direction. And then same thing if I'm training horizontal, it's going to be horizontal force. It's going to be uh, in a similar fashion. So just wanted to kind of touch on those things because I feel like, uh, you know, I just wanted to give you a rundown of what we're doing, seeing great results and just knowing and understanding that you don't just program these things in like phase one and then take them out. This should be something that's steadily developed throughout the entire course of your off season for you to get true adaptation. If not, you're just kind of playing with yourself right? Because you're not going to get the actual adaptation from it. It takes volume. It takes intensity. It takes intent. And it takes a series of time, three, four, five months for you to actually start to develop that. Um, last key factor I'll throw in is if you can get your athletes to take your shoes off when you're doing that, you're going to get more bang for your buck. I'll leave you with that last tip and I'll hold you guys next time.